Today I'm going to show you how to implement Firebase authentication into a React app. So here, as you can see, I have a brand new React app I have created with Create React App. And here is my Firebase console. And now I will click Create a Project and I will call my project test off. Then hit continue. I don't need analytics. Create project. All right, my project has been created. Continue. Now I need to create a web app here and I will call it with the same name, test off, register app. And now it showed me this Firebase config. So I will copy this and I could actually put it inside my app component, but will be much prettier if I put it into a separate file. So inside my source directory, I will create a new file and I will call this one, let's say Firebase config.js. And here inside I will just paste this. And now we just need to install Firebase. So I will open console and I will use yarn instead of npm. So yarn add Firebase, enter. Okay, now Firebase is installed. Let's go back to our app. So the next thing is actually that we need to enable authentication. So I'll click here, continue to console. And here I will go to menu, authentication and get started. I will choose email and password, enable and save. And now I can add authentication to my app. So here let's do const auth equals and here get auth on the app. And now we just need to import this get auth function. So here let's do import get auth from firebase slash auth. That's it. And uh, to use this auth, we need to export it. So let's do export const auth like this. And now we can use auth inside our app.js file. So let's go back to app.js. And now let's import our auth. So let's do import auth from Firebase config like this. And now let's get rid of all this HTML because we don't need this. I'll just leave an empty div like this. We don't need this CSS or logo. We just need an empty div. All right, so to implement authentication, first thing we are going to need is a register form. So I'll do H3 register and under this, I will create two inputs. The first one will be for email and the second will be for password. And now I need to add states for those two so I can edit them. So let's do const email set email equals use state and default will be an empty string. Same for the password. So const password and set password equals use state and default will be an empty string. Now I'll put them here. So value email and uh, now on change event set email event target value. Now same for the password value equals password and on, and on change equals event set password event target value. Okay, so now we have two inputs, the first one for email and the second for password. And now we just need a button to register user. So button register like this. Now I'll create a function for registering users. So let's create a function here, function register. And I will call this function from here on click register. All right, and now if we want to register user, there's a handy function. So inside the Firebase, so let's use it. The function is called create user with email and password. And we are going to import it from Firebase auth. So now I'm going to use this function here and it takes three params. The first one is our app that we are exporting. So let's use it auth. The second is our email. So let's do email. And the third one is password like this and this function is async so we need to either do dot then and handle the promise or we can do await here and now the problem is that we are using await in inside the normal function we need to add async here like this now this function can actually fail if something is wrong so to handle this if we are using promises we can do that catch and catch the exception or if we are using await we can use a try catch block here so i will put it inside try and i will catch the exception here and if there is any error with registration 
I'll put this error inside my state. So let's do const registration error and set registration error equals is state and the state default will be null. And here I will just do set registration error and I will put this exception here. When we are calling this register function, I will just set it to null. So every time we will, every time we hit the register button, the previous error will be cleaned. And if we have something here, let's print it under the button. So let's create a div here and let's print it here. So registration error, and it will have a message property. So we'll do that message here but only if we have something. So that's why I use question mark here because this can be null as well. So this function will create and log in our user. So we can actually get a response from this function and inside response, we will have a user object that we can save inside state. But there is a, I think better way of doing this and I will show you how. So first I will use effect here with an empty function that will run when the app loads. So that's why I have no dependencies here. So when the app loads, it will run this code once. So here I will add a auth listener and it will run every time something changes with authentication. So when user logs in or logs out or when the app loads and it discovers that there is a logged in user, it will run this uh, it will run our function passed to the auth listener. So first let's import this and the function is called on auth state changed and we are going to use it here. So we are going to register a auth listener. So let's do auth as the first param and here we have an empty arrow function. So when our app loads for the first time, it will register this auth listener and uh, as you can see, we are by passing here auth object and here this function will run when something changes with authentication. So here actually, instead of using no params, we get a user that can be both an object with information about our user or this can be null. So this can be null when user logs out or this can be an object where we are registering and logging in our user. So let's put our user into our state. So let's do here const user set user equals use state and default will be no like this. And here we can just do set user and we can use our user information from here. All right, so now as you can see, we are not using this user information anywhere. So let's scroll down to our HTML. And uh, here, as you can see, we are showing this register form, but uh, let's change it to showing a username in the, if there is any logged in user. So uh, if we have a user, and then let's show a div with our username. So, or maybe an email. So let's do user dot email. So I'm doing this uh, double exclamation marks to convert this to a Boolean. And now if there isn't any user, so no user here, I will have another div with our registration form. And I will also add login form here as well. So for now, as you can see, we don't have any user that's logged in, but we can register and uh, our user will be automatically logged in. But let's first see what happens if we just hit register. It will show our the error here. So we get a registration error because the email is invalid. But uh, let's register user. So test example.com and let's use test as a password. Register. Password should be at least six characters. This is the default setting, but you can change it inside the authentication settings. But let's just add one to three here. So now we are actually registered inside our app and we are logged in as well. So as you can see, we have our username here. So we can actually add logged in as, and you can see we are logged in. So another thing we need here is a button to log out. So let's do button log out. And here, let's say that on click, it will just run logout function. This function is undefined for now. 
but let's define it here. It will be also an async function. So async function logout, and this will be really simple. We just need uh, to import one function here and it's called sign out. And we just need to use it here. Sign out. This is a async function. So we need to do a wait here and it just takes one param and it is our auth. So now let's create a form to log in an existing user. So we have registering form here and uh, it uses email and password. But first I will name those to registration email and registration password. So this will differ from other email and password we are going to use for login. So here instead of email, I would do I will add registration email like this and same for the password and here set registration email and set registration password. Now we need to update those. So we are creating user for registration email and registration password. And here for our inputs, we are using registration password and registration emails. And uh, here on change, we are doing set registration email and set registration password like this. Now we can create a login form. So same here as the H3 and login. Now two inputs and the button. So same thing here. And we can actually copy this registration error div as well. So we'll just copy everything and paste it here. Now we need state for our login information. So let's scroll back up here and let's add and let's just copy those three. So I'll we'll copy paste. And here instead of registration, I would put login. And here instead of registration, I'll put login. So we have login email, login password and login error that we can use here inside our login form. So first login email and set login email here, login password and set login password here. Here instead of register, we will have a login function that is uh, undefined for now. And this label will be login for our button. And here, instead of registration error, we will show a login error. All right now let's create our login function here. So it will be an async function. So async function login. And this is as simple as this create user with email password. We just need to scroll up. And here we need to import sign in with email password. And I will copy this and paste it here. As always, the first problem will be our authentication object. So auth. the second will be our email. So login email, third will be login password like this. And this is an async function. So we need to do a wait, or you can do here dot then and dot catch to catch exception and catch the result. But I will do a wait. So this can fail as well. So I will do try catch here. So try, try to do this. And if it fails, let's catch the error and let's save it inside our login error. So set login error and let's put our error here. But every time we try, let's clean this first. So set login error and null here. Now let's try to log in. So test at example dot com and our password was test one two three login now we get a small error because we are invoking our logout at every render so let me get rid of those parentheses and now let's try to log in so login and we are logged in i can click logout we are logged out i can register as another user let's try with test two at uh, example dot com test three two one register we are registered and logged in. Now I can log out. Let's try with wrong password. Register. Email already in use. Let's try with wrong password here. Wrong password. Yeah, so it works. Again, also log in with this user. So test and the password here was 321. Login. Yeah, everything works. So now we'll just go through everything once again. So as you can see at the top, we have a user state that is a null as the default. So here inside our HTML, you can see that if we don't have any user, we are showing this register and login form. And uh, here 
when we register and hit this register button, we will run this register function. We will null the error if there is any existing error. And then we are going to try to register a user. If it fails, we are saving this error inside our state. But if it works, this function will actually call our auth listener that we have registered here and it will run this part. So the user object will change and it will be set inside our state. And same thing for our logout button. When we click logout, we will run sign out functionality, functionality from Firebase. And, and, and after this, this will be run again, but this time with user being null. So it will be saved inside our state with null as a value. So this way, this value will be null and it would show this register and login form again. So that's all for today. I hope you learned something useful. And if you did, please click the like button. This helped my channel grow. And maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Have a nice day and see you in the next one.